This week, the political car crash that ended Troy Buswell's ministerial career. Special report tonight. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lowe and Danielle Staniscom. Good evening. First this week, the final straw in Troy Buswell's ministerial career came when he crashed his government car outside his home on the 23rd of February. The Premier held a press conference where he attempted to explain what happened. Joseph Barker summarises an extraordinary week of events. Troy Buswell has resigned from the Cabinet after yet another incident a fortnight ago, at a wedding where he was seen drinking. He then drove to his Subiaco home where his government vehicle crashed into the front gates. In a news conference, Premier Colin Barnett revealed he had accepted Buswell's resignation. Uh, it was clear that uh, Troy is still uh, uh, not in a good place. Uh, again, very emotional, very upset, very apologetic. Um, but as I say, um, he had taken the decision, which he informed me of, to resign immediately as a Cabinet Minister. Uh, I accepted, obviously, that decision. Baswell's mental health has been in question. He was in a Perth hospital for 10 days, then was sent to a clinic in Sydney. He's currently not in hospital. This comes at a crucial time for the state government with a budget expected to be delivered in May and the Senate election in April. The Premier has said that the budget preparations are going along smoothly. The budget is uh, going smoothly and uh, you know, I've chaired the last two ERC meetings. Uh, other ministers are stepping up to the mark and, and probably putting in a bigger effort than maybe they had previously. Two replacements were announced later in the week. Dr Mark Nahan will become the new treasurer, while member for Alfred Cove, Dean Nadler, will take over the financial and transport portfolios. It's a challenging time, but uh, in Western Australia we have an action plan which I'm very confident that we will uh, have the state continue to grow rapidly and pr prosperous. I'm, I'm excited and, and really looking forward to the challenge. I'm not sworn in yet, so I've got to, uh, once sworn in, come up to speed as quickly as possible and look at the challenges uh, that lay ahead. This isn't the first time Mr Boswell has come into the public eye for the wrong reasons. Previously, he had an affair with a member for Fremantle independent politician Adele Carls and the infamous chair sniffing and brass snapping incidents that has landed Mr Boswell in hot water. But despite all this, the Premier stands by Mr Boswell. I don't think Troy's going to make any more mistakes. Um, well, I ride him harder than uh, Black Caviar was written. Opposition Leader Mark McGowan has wished Mr Buswell all the best, but has said the Premier has left many questions unanswered regarding this incident. I think there is a cloud of doubt that hangs over the Premier's explanation. I think there is a doubt about who knew what and when, and I think all of that information should be released publicly. The opposition also said changes to the Treasury portfolio highlighted the chaos and dysfunction within the Barnett government. Troy Buswell will remain in Parliament as the member for VAS. Joseph Barker, WAMN News. And WAMN News commentator Howard Sattler joins us now. Howard, is Troy Buswell's departure long overdue? Yes, I haven't said, but true, Mr Buswell has often seemed to be a car crash waiting to happen and ironically I suppose it was that very kind of event that finally did him in. But his political enemies, I think, should not leap too quickly to score points on this issue. Otherwise, some of their own skeletons may fall out of the cupboard. More on that one shortly. Back to you, Danielle. Thanks, Howard. Troy Boswell's political career has been full of controversy, but what does the public think about this sudden resignation? Patrick Lazars examines the public opinion. Um, I think he probably should because it's not exactly setting a good example of leadership. Um, I personally don't feel for him because I think he should resign because there's so much in the media about saying, you know, drive safely, no drink driving, things like that, and then he does the complete opposite. And it clearly he's lost his way. That's the only reason he's behaving like this. Yeah, he should retire. I think his losses the copybook a bit, bit too much, but now we feel sorry for him. The public has a very different opinion on Troy Boswell's recent mistakes. However, the Premier is asking the media to respect Troy Boswell's privacy. Patrick Lazars, WAM News. To other news, Federal Opposition Leader Bill Shorten and Deputy Leader Tanya Plipersek arrived in Perth for the WA Senate election campaign. They attended a caucus meeting at Parliament House and spoke about the Barnett government's mismanagement of the health system in Western Australia. Our concern is, as we know, that there is a commission of audit uh, which has released a 900-page report full of nasty surprises this report is being buried 
like a secret and it won't be made available to Western Australians till after they voted in the Senate by-election. We are very concerned that the Abbott government wants to add to the cost of living pressures of Western Australians by putting on a GP tax. Fremantle and Coburn have presented their final argument this week on the topic of council amalgamations. Coburn claims new local projects will be jeopardised if the new merger plan goes ahead. But Fremantle responded saying they have a strong financial capacity. Legal advice provided to the City of Coburn in March 2014 has confirmed that funding for 25 of the city's planned future facilities and projects could be under threat if the City of Coburn is carved up. In, in terms of Melville, they'll be picking up the majority of the rates, whereas Fremantle will pick up assets, but not the actual rate base that they need to fund these projects going forward. However, City of Fremantle Mayor Dr Brad Pettit has reaffirmed that there will be no loss of services. We actually collect about $3,000 in rates per, per, per resident. Um, compared to our neighbouring councils probably only doing somewhere between 12 and 1500 per resident. Mm -hmm. So I'm very confident that we can continue to fund those projects. According to Metropolitan Local Government Financial Position Review in 2012, Coburn ranked number 5, while Fremantle ranked 17. Meanwhile, submission to the Local Government Advisory Board was closed on Thursday. Shibzwe, WMN News. 457 visa holders are continuing their campaign against the state government's plan to make them pay school fees. Campaign organiser Dean Keating said the fee is racist and it doesn't give everyone a fair go. Yeah, we will we'll be relaunching the campaign in April. We'll be looking at uh, protests. Uh, the petition is still in with governments that we launched before Christmas and we're hopeful that common sense will prevail and that the Barnett government will see there's no money in this for the government. Um, it's it's anti, an anti-Irish policy. 457 visa holders who send their kids to a government school won't have to start paying the fee until 2015. And here are some other top stories making news around the world this week. Hong Kong Television Network founder Ricky Wong announced at a press conference that the channel will stop broadcast preparation work which was supposed to begin on July 1st. In a legal letter, the Office of Communications Authority warned HKTV that broadcasting using DTMB violates the local broadcasting ordinance. HKTV is now examining their legal options against the government's decision. The new development puts the channel's future in jeopardy. And the search for the missing flight MH370 is ongoing. China, Malaysia and Vietnam have combined their efforts in a desperate attempt to locate the missing plane. The aircraft was carrying 227 passengers and 12 crew members. Passengers were from 14 different countries, with the majority from China and Taiwan. Six Australian passengers are also missing. That's all we have for you this week. Thanks for watching. We have more news on our website, Facebook and Twitter. And here's Howard Sattler. Good evening, Howard. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Danielle. Labor, I think, would do well to back up its current point-scoring campaign to capitalise on the political demise of Troy Buswell. Why do I say that? Because these things have a habit, don't they, of jumping up and biting back down the track, often with more devastating results than the original issue. Already we're being told, reminded of the former ALP Transport Minister, now Federal Member of Parliament, Alana McTiernan, McTiernan and her several driving suspensions, and there are several other well-documented, very well-documented episodes of Labor politicians misbehaving badly on the drink. Worse than that, much worse, have been the litany of Labor politicians and union officials, colleagues, found guilty of corruption and in some cases jail. That is not to say that Mr Buzzle should be exonerated from his actions on that fateful night in late February. As more details emerge, it seems certain that he was not in a fit and proper state to be driving that night. Had he potentially put himself and other road users in trouble or in danger, but despite the many assumptions We'll never really know whether he was drunk. We don't know that since no breathalyzer tests were taken. That is for the police to answer and why the investigation was delayed so long. But for the state Labor opposition to now infer, as it has, there's been some sort of cover-up orchestrated by the Premier and his police minister is totally baseless. And to try and win votes off the back of the Buswell scandal that the Senate candidates at the by-election coming up in three weeks simply exposes Labor as a desperate party without legitimate policies. I'll be back next week. In the meantime, Check out my blog site, howardsettler.me, and the WAMN site for the latest news. Have a good night.